Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And a very interesting update um, with SA Rugby set to go uh, through a bit of a slight restructure with regards to certain um, structures within the setup to try and improve uh, but mainly sort of the junior box as well as the blitz box um, setup to try and turn around the very disappointing last of 12 months we've had in both departments. And this will see an interesting change with uh, coaches Dwayne Fumier and Don Human set to potentially start working more with the junior spring box to try and help uh, turn things around uh, next year after what has been a very disappointing campaign down Stellenbosch, which saw the junior box finish seventh uh, in the under-20 championship, the first time in a long time we haven't made semifinals, and uh, it was a pretty disastrous campaign. Uh, now, before we go into exactly what sort of the, the, the situation is and what the, the solution might be, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. So you all know that we had a dreadful, dreadful under-20 um, championship. And uh, as a result, there's a lot of pressure on uh, the head coach, Mafana and Kleko, who is part of the SA Rugby Moby unit, by the way. Uh, worth noting that, because we're going to come back to that Moby unit in just a bit. Um, so they won the seventh play um, play place playoff against Wales, but it's a team that should never be in the seventh place playoff. You know, it's a team that should be fighting for the top four and should be making semifinals. And uh, according to... Um, Sunday newspaper report, SA Rugby is planning going and a major restructures to address this. Now, SA Rugby CEO, Sviat Oberholzer, um, said that uh, we are just as disappointed in the junior box result as the management and players. We realize it is not good enough. We'll have a full review of the campaign soon. Now, the newly um, appointed SA Rugby head of rugby, um, Dave Vessels, is apparently sort of spearheading the restructure, obviously, because that is basically his role and uh, a couple of things are probably potentially looking to change um the restructuring is set to probably take place after the olympics because it will include potentially relooking at the bits box stage um sort of a uh, structure and that will all um sort of start take place in theory ahead of the bits box 24 25 campaign which gets underway if i'm not mistaken in november sort of december um after the olympics is sort of the end of their season now let's talk about uh, um the sort of the restructuring so at the moment there is a, a SA Rugby Moby unit, uh, uh, which is basically a mobile coaching unit. And uh, basically, uh, the whole idea of these Moby units, it's, it's a selection of coaches who can move between the structures and provide support, guidance, and kind of fill in where needed. Fran Antleco is one member. Dwayne Vermeulen is the newest member. And uh, Franz Del September is the third member. Now, we have seen Fran Antleco taking charge of the SAA side, for example, uh, two years ago. We know that he's generally the, the under-20 coach. Uh, Franz of September has been helping out with the women's, and obviously we've seen Dwayne Vermeulen involved in the, the spring box. Now, apparently moving forward, Dwayne Vermeulen uh, is going to get more involved in the junior box. And apparently also looking at uh, bringing the experience of Don Human. So apparently last week, um, uh, so if you look at the junior box, for example, there are only two coaches. Um, one of them is Lumumba Curry, and the other is Bafan and Tleko, just the uh, sole two. And... Uh, um, the Bama Mamba uh, carry was actually absent last week, and as a result, Brock Harris had to fill in and uh, came in and, and worked with the junior box as well. Already red flags for me. I personally think that in many ways, this sort of junior spring box and that kind of coaching role is a lot more difficult than, you know, the, the from a selection point of view, than the spring box are. Because you're dealing with players, a much wider player database for a start, and much less data. Uh, than what you've got at, at a senior level. So, for example, if you look at the Springbok players, you know, they'll be tracking all four URC teams, keeping a weary eye on the cheaters, and then looking at players overseas. But, you know, really, to be honest, they'll be looking at players that are already on their radar. You know, they'll have a group of about 50 to 100 players that apparently they're monitoring, and that's kind of who they'll sort of check up on. So they'll see Ty Green's doing well, but they're not going to be, you know, monitoring a random South African player playing in the Japanese second division, for example. You look at the 20s, completely different. You've now got a schoolboy system which is producing hundreds of, of, of players. You've got a varsity cup system which makes life a little bit easier because you can suddenly go and say, right, cool, what's happening in the varsity cup with regards to the under 20 players? And you've then got an under 20 uh, sort of uh, competition domestically. But how many players are falling through the cracks, for example? And how many players, you know, maybe don't get scouted, or maybe don't get an opportunity to go to the union immediately, and they have to make their way through club rugby or through the varsity cup, through the varsity shield? And so it's a massive, massive net that we have to kind of throw over all the players. And to be honest, I think that's where we're getting things really wrong. Um, you know, I think what we've seen, especially with the coaches, is that when we've got a good 
uh, group of players, for example, you know, if you look at the, the, the year of such founding Gomez Vida, when he came through and we basically played like a mini Six Nations and uh, we cleaned up, we, we won, we were undefeated and uh, it was a very good side. And uh, the problem is, you know, for example, we immediately reacted and say, right, well, you know, the coaching had nothing to do with that side because it was a good side. But then as soon as you play badly, then it's all on the coaches, not on the players. And I think it's a combination of both in both of those situations. Um, you know, I think that the coaching needs to be looked at. I think you look at the, the, the performance under 20, you look at the game plan, for example, the way they adjusted. And I think there were some red flags by the coaches. I also look at some of the players and think these are not the players we see playing in the, in the varsity cup and at school level where they are so, you know, so, so solid and, and, and you're making basic mistakes. And I think there's a massive uh, gap between our school rugby, which is still very good. Yes, maybe we have to take a back seat for now and sort of say, okay, well, maybe we have to put our hands up and say maybe it's not as good as we like to think it is. But there's no doubt of the talent coming through um, because we're looking at players like uh, Sash Van de Gomezulu at 22 years old, uh, everyone friends are coming through at, at 21. You know, um, there's some very, very talented players across the country coming through at very young ages and looking so good. The question is, how many of these players, for example, are falling through the cracks at the junior system and not making it to the junior box, you know? And I think that's something that they need to address if we know we're getting a selection, for example, if we know that every single year we are getting the 30, 40 best players at under 20 level in the squad, then it becomes completely reliant on the coaching staff. But I genuinely think that at the moment, things are not set up so that we can actually find and identify that top 30 to 40 players. Um, we've also had an issue, obviously, not being able to play together as much, um, which has been addressed by, you know, the rugby, under 20 rugby championships. So I think that'll become a very important um competition with regards to development. Um, but I also think, you know, I, I'm kind of a bit confused as to why Dave Wayne has not been involved before this. You know, he is part of the Moby unit, which means that he is supposed to be accessible. Now, how much input is Dane Vermeulen putting into the spring box compared to what he could have given to the, to the SA under 20s? And I personally think it's chalk and cheese. You know, I think Dwayne Vermeulen obviously is, is, is a very highly rated by Rusty Rasmus, for example. And, uh, you know, he's been in that box environment. He knows exactly what it is to be a spring box. Imagine how valuable he'll be at an under 20 level where he's looking at a World Cup, double World Cup winner, going through the motions with you guys, with, with the youngsters, guiding through, this is what needs to be a Springbok. And not like, this is what it means to be a Springbok 10, 15 years ago. This is literally what it means to be a Springbok right now. If you want to be a Springbok right now, this is what you've got to do. And I think that's where we've gotten it really wrong. I think Dion Davids, for example, being involved in there, will help as well, you know, a bit of a scrum technician, for example, and, you know, I think sorting out the set piece will be massive. But I do think that we need to relook at this Moby unit because, for me, there's far too many people who are kind of helping out here, like helping out there, and and not really, you know, as much as the expertise is supposed to be there for the taking and they have to be moved around, we're not really seeing that. We, have, we, we haven't really seen Dwayne Vermeer involved in the s 20s at any stage. He wasn't over in the, with them for the rugby championship, for example. Um, so for me, you know, it's almost become like a bit of a, 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 a tick box exercise we've got this Moby unit but it's not it's not being used effectively or else maybe it's too small maybe you know we need to look at more permanent appointments and then look at this Moby unit how they then move across those systems and ensure that things are happening at the right levels at the right different sort of coaching structures and I'm talking junior spring box blitz box uh, women's sevens you know uh, the, the women's 15s the spring box we've got all those sort of different structures you know we need a we need a junior uh, it's on a 20 woman side as well moving forward and uh, you know we need coaches and, and somebody overseeing all these structures to ensure that they are the pipeline is in place and i think that's something that we need to get right at a national level i think we've got the right coaches for example i do think we've got the right players but the problem is until we make sure our pipeline is 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 is, is foolproof not foolproof but very solid you know, there might become a bit of a player gap. And that's the that's what the worry when you see a performance like this SCN of 20, people suddenly worry, you know, is this going to spill through in the spring box in a few years' time? Which I don't think is the case. You know, you looked at that side and about to be like Shakani, I mean, he looks like he could be like a Ruan Fenty. He could be playing URC this year. He looks that talented. Uh, and um, Lorenzo Julius, you know, we all know how highly rated he is. He looks like someone who could be playing Curry Cup right now. So there are those players. Jeff Van Heeren, for example, has already played URC. So there's some very good players in that SCN of 20 side. But how do we take the next step? And how do we make sure that there are more of those kind of players involved in the under-20 level? So interesting to see exactly what happened. Same thing with the Bits Box, for example. We've seen a change in coaching. Philip Sam having to take over halfway through the season because of the poor results. We've got a really good 7th Academy that Neil Parcel was set up. But now, for example, are we getting the right coaches, the right players? So we've got to have a bit of a relook at our structures because now is the time to solidify our dominance. And if we can get it right, 
nothing can touch the SA rugby, really, um, from a, a, holistically. Obviously, when it comes to World Cups, you know, at the top, top levels, there's so small margins that, you know, you're not even going to be, I don't think you're going to ever be able to dominate like three World Cups in a row type thing. Um, you know, I'd be very surprised if we do the three feet, for example. But we need to be make sure that we are competitive so that we are always one of the favorites in the World Cup, one of the favorites in the seven system, one of the favorites in the under 20 championship, one of the favorites in the women's under 20, cha- uh, under uh, women's sevens. And soon, very soon, be one of the favorites when it comes to the women's 15s, because why not, you know? Um, so let me know if you have any suggestions, any sort of comments about that, down in the comments below, smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.